Yo, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, we're gonna learn how to use the autocomplete input that is from Material UI. I had some trouble when I was first working with it and I figured that this would be a good tutorial to learn off of. So this is what we're gonna be building today. We are grabbing some data from an API, a NBA player name API, where we can autocomplete with a player's name. So if I were to type in, let's say, Michael, we would see Michael Smith and Ainsley. If I were to just type in Ainsley, I would see Ainsley. But if I typed in, like, let's say, gibberish, we get a custom error that says, ain't no players of this name. Damn. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I have a semi-brand new React I've made right here. It has all the components from my previous tutorial. If you want to check those out, links in the description below. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is installing all of our dependencies in this React project. So all that you're going to have to do is npm i at mui slash material space at emotion slash react at emotion slash styled. This is installing our, all of our dependency that we're going to need from material UI. And at the same time, let's go ahead and create our components for this, uh, for this project. So I'm going to create a new file inside of my components folder right here. And I'll just call it, hmm, let's see what would be a good name, live search.js, seems pretty good. And I'll go ahead and just copy this content and I'll just put it inside of here just so we have some template code. I'll get rid of this app.css because we don't have that. And I'll call this live search. And let's get rid of this right here and i'll go ahead and also import all of our stuff that we need from material ui and all the stuff that we need from react so the first thing that we need is you guessed it react so import react comma we're going to need a use state oops use state and a use effect for our actual api call from react and the next thing we're going to need is a text field. So I'll do import text field from at MUI slash material slash text field. And next thing we're going to need is import stack from at MUI slash material slash stack you can replace stack with a div if you want but i'm just going to be using I'm, I'm just going to use stack since it's already available from material ui and the next thing we're going to need is autocomplete so we'll do import autocomplete from mui material slash autocomplete and last thing we need is a box so that will just be import box from at MUI slash system. Perfect, so that takes care of our imports and our package installation. And now let's go ahead and run our app. So let's do npm start. All right, so now what we're gonna do is make a call to an NBA player API where we can get some players' names so we can add them to the input text field. So how that's gonna work is inside of our function live search, I'm gonna go ahead and create a use state variable. So I'll just be const, let's call it JSON results and set json results is equal to use state Oops, state and we're going to set it to an empty array block and we'll create a use effect which is going to be responsible for our our actual api call so the use effect and let's go to this first part right here let's go to return let's go to basically half the entire uh import and i'll just do fetch and the API that we're going to be calling from, it'll be HTTPS colon double slash www.balldontlie.io slash API slash v1 slash players. And then what we're going to do is a dot then, oops, dot then. And then for our response, I'll set it as response.json. And next dot then I'll do 
json is going to be set json results and set it to json.data. Let's go to this input because we don't need that. And so real quickly, what we just did here is we made a fetch call to this API and we're setting our JSON results to json.data, which in the case of API, it goes uh, json.data. So you would have to select .data to actually get the API data. And so just to make sure that everything is working, I'll just add a console log outside of our use effect and I'll just do json.results and I'll go ahead and import that component into my main app component. So I'll just do live search with a self-closing brace. And now if we check it out inside of our console, we should see unexpected. I think the URL might be wrong. Ah, uh, player, uh, we want to do players. There we go. So now if we check it out, we should get some data. Perfect, we got 25 players. And these are the players that we're going to go ahead and add into our text field. All right, so now that we have all of our data and we have everything set up, what we're going to be doing is selecting our autocomplete component that we're going to be grabbing. And it's this basic one right here. It's a combo box. Oh man, I feel like I'm talking about a KFC combo. <laughs> all right, so inside of this combo box, we have uh, not chicken, but we have all these sort of properties right here that we will be going through individually and talking about them one by one. But we're not going to copy this stuff. I just want to show you guys how it works. It's just a uh, drop down box where we can also search up whatever we want. So I search a fight club. It would show me fight club right here. Cool. So now to do that, I'm going to get rid of this div. Well, these divs and I'll add a curly brace inside of the return and I'll do stack and I'll give it a SX is equal to let's do width at 300. So there's a width of 300 on the entire div or all or all of the children within this stack right here. All right, so now for the actual autocomplete component itself, let's do auto complete with a self closing brace. And I'm gonna get rid of this autocomplete right here. We don't actually need that from the import. And there's a lot of properties that are gonna be coming with this autocomplete. The first one that we're gonna talk about is ID. It's real simple. If you wanna target the ID for CSS purposes, we can just use ID. And uh, I'll just call it NBA player demo. Our right, next thing that we're going to be talking about is called get option label. So the get option label is equal to curly braces, JSON results with an error function. And I'll do back ticks, uh, dollar sign curly braces inside of there. I'll do JSON results dot first underscore name space dollar sign curly braces, JSON results dot last underscore name. So what get option label is, it's just going to be how the actual individual label is going to be displayed. So let's say if we had uh, first name Michael, last name Jordan, it'll just be Michael space Jordan. And if we added like 555, five, five, then every single option label will have the player's name and then 555 five at the end of it. So it's just going to be how the actual option label is going to be displayed. Next thing that we're going to talk about is called options. This is really simple. It's just all of our options that are available. So that's just gonna be our entire array of results. Next thing is a little bit of styling for our actual, uh, uh, for our autocomplete input. So I'll just do SX is equal to width at 300. And I also added a margin auto just so we have everything in the middle. So we don't have to worry about anything being pushed at one side. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is called is option equal to value. And I'll do option comma value arrow function. And I'll do option dot first name underscore is equal to value dot first underscore name. And let's see, what is this yelling at us? Expected an assignment, but got that. All right, it's because these curly braces, whoops. So we just need to get rid of those. All right, so what this is, is it's used to determine if the option represents the given value um, and an option can only match with one value. That just means that whatever we type in the actual input field, is that equivalent to any sort of option that's available? So if we had 15 Michaels and then somebody typed in Michael space J, then we would only see Michael Jordan then. And the next thing that we're gonna talk about after that is called 
no options text. This is basically going to be if there's no options available, if there's no player with that name, then we, we can set a custom message to display. So I'll just say no available players. Bam. Perfect. Next thing we're going to talk about is called render option. This is going to be used to render our actual options. So I'll do props, comma, JSON results is equal to smooth curly braces. And inside of there, what I'll do is we'll add a box. And inside of the box, I'll do JSON results dot first underscore name and JSON results dot last underscore name. And I'll do component is equal to li. Oops, and I'll do dot 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 props. And I'll do key is equal to JSON results dot ID. So we did a lot here. This basically is going to be responsible for rendering our options. And we're rendering each of them each of those options in a box. And those boxes are going to be equivalent to an li tag. And inside of the li tag, we will have the player's first name separated by a space and then their last name. And then we have a key right here, which is going to be responsible for uh, differentiating each uh, different each different li tag. So we don't have, let's say if we type in Michael, we don't have like six different Michaels show up where there are none. And this props is going to be allow, this props is going to allow us to actually click on the individual option to be able to render it later on. And the last uh, property that we're going to be talking about is called render input. And this is going to be used to render our input. So I'll do params and we'll render it inside of our text field. So I'll do text field with a self closing brace dot 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 params. And I'll do label is equal to uh, search for a player. And so now after all this, we've imported our uh, component, it's our main app component, we should see our text field appear right here. Perfect. And if I click this open button, we should see 25 players, each of them with different names. And I know that if I were to type in Michael, we should only see two results because there's only two Michaels that are gotten from this API. None of them are Jordan, which makes no sense. Um, but now if we actually search in, uh, say Jabari, we see Jabari bird. If I search in bird, we see that. If I search in D, I'll see all of these results right here. Before I end the tutorial, I forgot to show you guys the actual custom error that we get. So if I typed in a bunch of gibberish right here, we'll see that we have our custom error right here. No available players. Damn. And that concludes the tutorial. I hope that it helps you out. I hope you learned a lot from this and, uh, I would highly recommend you read on the docs, there's a lot, a lot, a lot more type of uh, uh, autocompletes that you can add. And uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.